I'm about to call the United States Navy. You're going to want to hear this conversation. America's Navy is pay off their Adam. Look at exactly where we are headed. It certainly does make you think. There's no doubt that things are incredibly dangerous in the world right now, especially in the Middle East. You've got people tossing around the term World War III with all seriousness. And, and you got to stop for a moment and say, how bad is this right now? What road are we going down here in terms of a potential war? And how in the hell did we get here? I want you to see this. This is a remarkable split screen. On the top there, you see Jake Sullivan. He's the National Security Advisor. And he, in September of 2023, in China, gave his assessment of the Middle East. And then you'll see Tony Blinken, the Secretary of State, this week giving what can only be called a different assessment. The war in Yemen is in its 19-month truce. For now, the Iranian attacks against U.S. forces have stopped. Our presence in Iraq is stable. I emphasize for now because all of that can change. And the Middle East region is quieter today than it has been in two decades. I would argue that we have not seen a situation as, as dangerous as the one we're facing now across the region since at least 1973. Wow, that's pretty stunning, isn't it? And it's also pretty terrifying. And that's just the difference between four months. Four months ago, things have been more peaceful in the Middle East than we've seen in decades. And then just four months later, it's more dangerous than it's been since the early 70s. That's five decades ago. Well, what happened and where is this headed exactly? Well, I want to show you a couple of different videos that have been put together by citizen journalists about some things they're noticing in the real world with regard to the military and with regard to, well, what appears to be a slow walk toward war. We'll start here with uh, new standards for recruitment in our military. We all know recruitment is down. So how are they going to fix that? I'm about to call the United States Navy. You're going to want to hear this conversation. America's Navy, this pay officer, Adam. Hey, Adam, this is Cody. I'm calling from Washington State. Hello, Cody. I am in Oregon State. Yes. I just heard on TikTok that you guys are no longer requiring GEDs or high school diplomas. Is that true? Senior, you still there? Yes. Okay, so the new work, so yes, apparently it is that is correct. Uh, the, but the caveat to that is you have to score 50 or above on the ASVAB. All right, well, thank you for clarifying that. Looks like we're going to war. Well, thanks for, thanks for giving me information. Oh, well, let's hope not, but uh, thanks for giving me some information. So I appreciate it and I learned a little bit. So uh, good to go. Uh, yeah, if you get any more questions or anything, reach out to us, okay? I appreciate that. Have a good day. Straight from the horse's mouth, we're going to war. Now, that's the conclusion that he came up with, because obviously, by lowering the standards in the Army, you don't even need to be a high school graduate or have a GED. Uh, they just want warm bodies. We just need bodies to fill these uniforms. And it's confirmed, by the way, by none other than military.com. Uh, that was the Navy recruiter you just saw in that video. And here they're confirming that the Army has dropped the requirement for a high school diploma because of this recruiting crisis. Now, yes, it is a recruiting crisis and we need to have a military at full strength. But why the urgency now? Why actually drop not just physical standards that we've seen them do for the last couple of years, but now even educational standards, basic standards? Why are we recruiting so heavily right now? And and there's another video I want you to see that isn't directly related to the military. It's related, well, to your insurance. Now, watch through with me and put these pieces together. You'll see where we're headed. Y'all need to check your insurance policies. Listen to this. This is something that made me go, hmm. As you may know, I have had my insurance license in the state of California for over a decade. And when I was reviewing policies for 2024, I noticed this new exclusion. Look here, this is under exclusions and expenses not covered on a 2024 Cigna health policy. Treatment of an injury or a sickness, which is due to war, declared or undeclared, riot or insurrection. 
This is not typical. This is an insurance policy from United last year for 2023. And the language typically reads like this. What happens with my coverage under extraordinary circumstances? And it says in cases of disaster, epidemic, war, riot, insurrection, that they will do their best to provide the services you need. But now take a look at United's 2024 health insurance policy, another exclusion, T, war. We do not cover an illness, treatment, or medical condition due to war, declared or undeclared. Cigna and United aren't the only ones that have changed their language, excluding war from their policies. Anthem has also done this. And it just makes you wonder, why in the world would that be the case? It does make you wonder exactly that. Why suddenly are insurance companies taking the war exclusion there out of guaranteeing coverage for you? That's a little unnerving. Now put those stories together with what was undeniably true over the Trump administration, the message and rhetoric that we were getting from Joe Biden and Democrats. Remember how they kept beating the same old drum and declaring the same old fear-mongering tactics about Donald Trump, that he would take us to war for political purposes. How many of you today are concerned there's, a, for the first time in your career, a genuine possibility of a nuclear war? You said yesterday, you've said it again now, it's dangerous that the United States has never been this close, as close as it is now, to nuclear war. This is not a business deal. This is not who builds the next skyscraper. I said, as the walls close in on this man, I'm worried he's going to get us to war in Iran. Unfortunately, I may have been right. I don't know what it would have done when this president almost started a full-blown war with Iran by the way, uh, whenever we see clips like this of Joe Biden from three, four, five years ago, it's important to point out how incredibly uh, stark the deterioration of this man's abilities are. His speech, his ability to form sentences and words. Uh, but then look at actually what he was saying. That was years back to back of Joe Biden warning the world without any, by the way, you notice how the media didn't push back. You notice how the people that he was talking, they all agree with him warning everyone, warning the world, and terrifying the American people that Donald Trump was going to lead us to war, lead us to nuclear war, to be specific. And in this case, the expanded clip I want to show you, specifically lead us to war with Iran for political purposes. The world has changed because what Trump has done. And the American people, including independents and some Republicans, know how bad he is, know how much he's misrepresented, know how he's getting close to getting us in a war. I said, as the walls close in on this man, I'm worried he's going to get us to war in Iran. Unfortunately, I may have been right. The fact of the matter is there's a lot at stake in this election. I, I do love the fact, by the way, that he says without irony, I said this and I've been saying it, and it turns out I may have been right. Dude. First of all, that would have been the first thing that you were ever right about in your entire career with regard to foreign policy or national security. But the question, this 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 idea, this, you know, I've been saying this, I've been saying this, and now it turns out, well, I'll be damned. I may have been right. Why were you even saying it if there was any question whether you were right or wrong? But again, the media never pushes up back on that, that irony. But here's Joe Biden accusing Donald Trump as the walls are closing in on him and as as his political fortunes start to dwindle, Donald Trump is going to lead us to war against Iran. Of course, under Donald Trump, we were at peace. In fact, he was the first president not to commit the American military to any extended operations overseas. The first president since, I guess, since World War II, right? It was the opposite. He didn't lead us to war with Iran or anybody. And now look at where we are. Look at where we are in 2024 as the walls are closing in on Joe Biden in the middle of an election year, as his political fortunes are slipping away. Look at exactly where we are headed. It certainly does make you think.